The third anniversary of Fire Emblem Heroes has begun, and we've officially entered year 4 of the game's lifespan. Today I want to talk about the recent Fae channel which outlines what is happening for the third anniversary celebration. It also introduced some new features, one of them is pretty awesome, the other is real controversial. If you haven't watched the Fae channel, essentially there is going to be a new monthly subscription type pass. There is a lot of talk regarding that feature, so we'll save it for last because it's quite a doozy, and I feel like it definitely overshadows a lot of the other really good things happening. Before we begin, this Fae channel features a new face. We had Phoenix, the chief of the Sovereign Order of Avian Reporters. Seems like Fae read the script ahead of time and called for a vacation because, oh boy, like I said, lots of controversial things to talk about. You may have seen the results leaked, but we did get an official announcement of our Choose Your Legends 4 winners. We got Dimitri taking first place, with Claude being the runner-up for the men's division, Edelgard handily won the women's division, and in second place was Lysithia. Same results as the midterm results. Everyone here is in their war phase design, so hopefully we'll see some interesting takes on each character. I saw a comment saying that the house leaders could actually just get their alternate hairstyles for these brave vaults, which I think could actually happen. Lysithia also has some really interesting possibilities because of, well, light spoiler reasons. Personally, I have no issue with the winners from this year. It was a pretty inevitable because Three Houses is a great game and it seems like it was well received by most Fire Emblem fans, which is a good sign. Tune in next year to find out if Marth can finally pull off a victory. On to the third anniversary celebration, we have a bunch of things happening, most of them starting today right now. First off, not mentioned during the Fae channel is that we are getting 333 Heroic Grails, which is the third anniversary present that should be in your inbox right now. The third anniversary quest will feature orbs, dragonflowers, and more, and then we'll have a special Aether Rage structure you can build. Of course, there will be a login bonus, and you'll definitely want to keep up to date because we've got a ton of events and banners incoming. First up, we have three separate hero fests coming, and these will feature every year's CYO class. They each last for a week, and the first one is our year three winners, Brave Camilla, Eliwood, Alm, and Micaiah. The second week features our year two winners, Brave Ephraim, Veronica, Celica, and Hector. Then the third week has our year one CYO units, Brave Roy, Lucina, Lynn, and Ike. Definitely an enticing offer since the refines for those Choose Your Legends year one units turned out to be pretty darn good. For each of these banners, you also get 5 Hero Fest tickets, and these are tied to the daily login bonus for each of them, so don't miss out on those. Next, we have Daily Bound Hero Battle Revivals, and each one comes with their summoning banner too. That's 18 different free summons, plus there are quests for each one apparently. We also have Daily Reward Maps returning, 13 days with each map, offering 2 orbs for each difficulty means that's an easy 26 orbs. There is also going to be a free 5 star special hero summon, basically it's a random summon like normal from a pool of all the special heroes from last year. You can try to narrow it down to what color offers the best chances at something good, but really it's just RNG. From a quick glance, I think red is pretty decent, with colorless being kinda meh depending on how you feel about healers. Next topic is a Hero Rises Returns. This is a bit of a competition where the winning unit will be given out to everyone for free. This year, the event is made of two parts. The first is a regular voting event. Basically, go to the website and pick a character. The top eight units from this portion will then be placed in a voting gauntlet in-game, and the winner of that will determine who is the free unit. Surely, there is going to be some majority favorites, but they will have to win three rounds of the voting gauntlet where last minute multipliers can steal the show, so it's definitely not a 100% sealed deal for anyone. Hopefully, any of the eight qualifiers are worthwhile units to have, but we'll just have to wait and see. That was the gist of the third anniversary celebration. Lots of good stuff coming in the next couple weeks, so keep on logging in. Now let's move on to the next topic, which is our next banner. We got a sneak preview of this year's Valentine's banner, and it's a Shadows of Olympia themed one. This banner will begin in a couple days, and you have plenty of orbs if you want to summon on it. We'll also have an accompanying Tempest Trials for this banner, and you can earn Valentine's Silk as the reward unit. Now let's take a quick look at our new units. Unsurprisingly, we have another dual hero, and for the Valentine's theme, of course, it's going to be Alm and Celica. Dual Alm looks like an infantry axe unit, and I think we finally will have someone who will take down Anna as the fastest base speed axe infantry unit. Maybe? Alm and Celica are going to have a unique weapon, and Alm keeps his legendary alt's lunar flash special. He also comes with bonus doubler, low attack and speed, and what looks like Rouse, speed and res. I think the weird thing is that Alm seems to start to turn next to other units which wouldn't activate the Rouse buff, so this might actually be an old skill and the icon is a mistake, I don't know. 
His stats should be 40 HP, 35 attack, 32 defense, and then possibly 26 res and 41 speed if that is an oath buff. I'm guessing Scepter of Love will grant a flat plus 3 speed. We did not get to see their dual skill in action, but we'll find out soon enough. Next is going to be Valentine's Fae, who is a colorless armored archer. She has an inheritable bow, moon bow, death blow 4, bold fighter, and armor march. I was trying to do some quick math and I think her bow is granting extra attack since you can reverse engineer the enemy's defense stat because moon bow does proc in the video. Anyway, Fae should have 43 HP, 40 attack, 23 speed, 35 defense, and 38 resistance. That would mean 179 BST on a ranged armor unit and I think that's not a mistake because Faye gets the trainee boost. Pretty insane. Next we have Conrad who is a sword cavalier. He also has an inheritable sword plus ardent sacrifice, brazen defense and res, and wings of mercy. His stats are 39 HP, 32 attack, 23 speed, 33 defense, and 35 resistance. Kind of the same as his lance version. The last banner unit is Emperor Rudolph with his first Faye appearance. Rudolph is a lance armor unit with the unique thorn lance and also bonfire special fighter and what looks like threaten attack and defense 3. His stats are looking like 46 HP, 21 speed, 29 res, and possibly a crazy 43 attack and 41 defense. I don't think his lance is granting a flat stat boost since he would end up in a weird BST total if it did. Anyway, not sure what his lance does, but it looks like it does accelerate special triggers since bonfire ends up as a 2 cooldown special. Last we have Soak, our Tempest unit. She is a cavalry healer with the Inheritable Report Wand Plus, Martyr Plus, Heavenly Light, Lift to Serve, and Speed Opening. Her stats are 40 HP, 28 attack, 22 speed, 32 defense, and 29 resistance. Like Conrad, Soak is similar to her infantry counterpart, but that cavalry BST penalty hits real hard. Moving on, we got a new summoning change. Moving forward, there will actually be a 4 star focus rate for new special heroes and new hero banners. This 4 star focus rate is only for one of the banner units and I guess you can think of it as a preview of the who is going to be the demote for the regular new hero banners. For this upcoming banner, Conrad will be the 4 star focus unit so you can just get him at 4 stars instead of 5 stars which is great if you just want Conrad himself and don't mind spending some feathers. We don't know all the details about this change just yet, like if you get the 4 star focus rate does that reset the overall pity rate? I don't know, we'll just have to find out. This is for sure an interesting change and we'll have to see how it plays out. It could be really great depending on how the demote situation goes this year, plus if we get back the instant 3 to 4 star units for new banners. The last major update is one that I am extremely happy to see and like everything else, I feel like it got overshadowed completely by the new Fate Pass. We finally got our answer to what divine codes are used for and boy is it looking pretty good. You can spend divine codes to compile combat manuals, which is something I've been asking for for a long time. This feature will not be implemented this month, but it will be in the March 4.3 update. We don't know all the details yet, but the gist of it is that you can exchange divine codes for combat manuals of units. We did not find out if the part one of the divine codes meant something, but it's possible this was a placeholder text and maybe its function got changed. It's looking like instead of choosing specific combat manuals, there will be a set path or set paths and you must collect the combat manuals in order to get to the end of that path. So in path 1 for example, if I want Summer Levitine for her mirror impact skill, I would have to get Spring Alphonse, Ilgur, Spring Bruno, and New Year's Fjorm first. You can also start any path whenever and work along whichever one you want, so that's pretty good. Along with the paths, which I'm guessing will be set, there will be limited time combat manuals that you can only get with the special divine codes. However, you can choose any combat manual you want from this pool so you don't have to follow a path. If you want the Spring Kagedo combat manual, you can just choose it. This particular part of the feature really excites me if it's done properly. I, it could be a way to offer rewards for certain events or even just quests. Like if they add these special divine codes to Tempest Trials for example, it would be an awesome way to offer combat manuals of the bonus units or something similar. Again, more details will be revealed next month. I just pray the prices for the exchange rate isn't absurd because man, they really need this system to be a welcomed addition. I think it has potential, I hope it keeps being updated because eventually players will clear out these set paths and it will be a shame if you didn't have more options available. I am very much looking forward to the implementation of this feature. 
something that got teased at the end of this Faye channel was a sprite of Lysithia in her academy attire. I think this was a cheeky nod that regular Lysithia is coming soon, which means a Three Houses banner as well. Interestingly, the special illustrations, which usually have artists drawing the characters they made for Faye, had one done by Kusuki Hara Toshiyuki, which showed Claude, Hilda, and Lysithia. I looked up this artist and they did not draw Claude or Hilda, so it could be another hint that they will be drawing Lysithia for her academy appearance. I look forward to more student units, and now the Death Knight has two little girls to worry about. Now we get to the bad news. I feel like if this Fate channel was a report card, we have just been scoring A's and B's and then you get to the bottom of that and there's a big fat F. So the game's newest controversy is this introduction of the Fate Pass. It costs $9.49 a month, aka 10 bucks, and while it does offer some really cool things, but my goodness does it just execute things really bad in my opinion. If you purchase this monthly pass, you get 5 benefits, which we'll go through right now. First up, we have Resplendent Heroes. These are not a new hero type like Dual Heroes or Legendary Heroes, but they are a visual plus gameplay change for older heroes. Essentially, Resplendent Attire is a complete artwork overhaul for older heroes, and they will be dressed up in outfits with themes related to Fire Emblem Heroes' story itself. For example, Lin here has a Niffle theme, others may have an Asker theme, or maybe Embla, and my god, I wouldn't mind designs based around Hell, Leaf, and Thrasir. This visual update includes new artwork, a new sprite, and new voice lines. However, these resplendent units are still the same as their base versions, and you may swap them between the normal attire or the resplendent one. The Fae Pass will give out resplendent versions of these units, and any regular versions of those units will automatically become resplendent too, aka they can use the new attire. The real kicker, however, is that resplendent units also get plus 2 to all stats. That bonus is always active, even if you switch back to the regular attire. I don't have a problem with skins for units, but tying something like stat buffs to this is really problematic. I do not think the answer to buffing older units is making people actually pay for more stats. They should 100% be able to get those boost in game in some way. We also do not know what happens if you don't keep your Fate Pass subscription. Do these units lose their resplendent status and the extra stats? I don't know. Besides Lynn, they also showed off resplendent Cordelia, who is wearing an Asker themed outfit. I think she looks pretty good, and well, I know a lot of people don't like her original artwork. Regarding the distribution of these units, Lynn will be out with the next update, which is when the Fate Pass goes live. She will be available for about 20 days, and then it will switch over to Cordelia. I believe you straight up get these as 5 star units even if you don't have the original versions, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Also if you do miss the distribution period for say Lin for example, they are planning to allow players to purchase individual resplendent heroes they have missed, but you must be a Fae Pass subscriber anyway. In review, the Fae Pass will get you 2 resplendent heroes per month on the 10th and 25th of each month. There is a website that is supposed to offer more information including the lineup of resplendent heroes but I don't believe it's up yet. You must claim the resplendent unit during their distribution, it's not an automatic get. We have 4 more benefits to cover. Second benefit offers special Fae Pass quests. These will be available twice every month and offer actually pretty good rewards it looks like. Just from the Fae channel it looks like you get 5 orbs, 120 divine codes, 35 divine dew. 50 heroic grails and 120 aether stones. I'm assuming that's just the first batch for that month, so if you double those amounts, it's not that bad, I think. Personally, I don't really have an issue with this benefit since there are already bundles that offer bonus items like this. The next three benefits are a bit more of an issue. The third benefit is that you get an expanded summoner support. Instead of just the normal one summoner support unit, you can now have up to three total, so two additional ones. First off, this seems like a quality of life feature which shouldn't be tied to a paid monthly pass, but I also think this is kinda bad for gameplay balance possibly. Usually you would think more summoner support should be an overall win, but it's a very powerful feature to just hand out more of. It grants plus 5 HP and plus 2 to all stats, which is equivalent to plus 5 merges and an extra 3 HP on top. What this means is that people who buy the pass can just bring two more summoner support units to their PvP modes. I mean, people who can spend money will generally have higher merge units anyway, but I think for an expanded feature like this, it should either not happen or it should be given to everyone. 
The fourth benefit is called React, aka it's actually Divine Pulse or Mila's Turn Wheel. If your units have not acted, you can return to the start of the previous turn. If a hero has already acted, you can return to the start of the current turn. Even if you get a game over, you can return to the start of the last turn. Did I mention you can use React as many times as you want? Obviously you can't use this in PvP mode since obviously that would be broken. Still this easily is another feature that should have been given to everyone. It's not a huge issue because you can just restart a level anyway, but this feature can save stamina I guess. I feel like Fae doesn't really string you up on stamina usage anyway since Grand Hero battle type maps are literally free to enter. For that reason I kind of feel like having this behind a paywall is just dumb. The fifth feature is called Auto Start. You can automatically repeat a map on Auto Battle until you run out of stamina. This can be used in the Training Tower, Tempest Trials, and Forging Bonds, which all happen to be our main grinding type of content. In Tempest Trials, the game will also automatically continue playing with your backup teams if your first team falls. This is really awesome, but again, why is it behind a paywall? Obviously the answer is money, but these types of quality of life features just feel bad to hide behind a subscription pass. I know the game is free, but Jesus, Faye is just raking in the money anyway. So in review, the Faye Pass will be a new one month subscription pass that costs $9.49. Your price may vary based on location. With it, you get two resplendent heroes per month, which gives you the actual unit plus a brand new resplendent attire with new artwork and new voice lines. Those units also get plus two to all stats and it applies to all original copies of that unit. In addition, you will also get special Fey Pass quests twice a month, extended summoner support, the react feature, and also the auto start feature. Is all of this worth $10 a month? Maybe? I think the main draw is probably those resplendent heroes, which for the most part I don't have a problem with. My issue is that it appears to be a way to buff older units with more stats, which I don't agree with. There is also a lot of questions still regarding what happens if you don't resubscribe to the Fate Pass. Do you keep the extra stats and the new outfits, or do you have to keep paying? This will be a heavily controversial topic, as I'm sure you've already seen. I think a good question to ask is, why is this happening? If you keep up with modern games these days, the games as a service model has overtaken the market clearly. The battle pass trend is everywhere these days, and it's clear that it makes a lot of money, otherwise every company wouldn't be doing it. For Nintendo, it's clear that they are trying to grab a slice of that pie. We saw that the pay one price upfront for a game did not succeed with Super Mario Run, at least financially, compared to the gotcha freemium style. It's actually disgusting how much more money Faye makes compared to the Nintendo's literal flagship characters game. For their next Mario based mobile game, Mario Kart Tour, if you aren't aware, the game started with a subscription type pass like the one we're seeing here. Clearly Nintendo thinks this is a good way to make money and they are also now transitioning it to their best money making mobile game. For me personally, I think the pass would be okay if it did not lock literal game features behind it. That's just dumb. Paying for stats is also kind of bad if that's their answer to stat power creep. I would be okay if they wanted to release paid skins, go ahead and make 20 Lin and Camilla skins. If it doesn't affect gameplay and people want to buy them, I don't think it's a big issue. I am pretty disappointed that this Fade channel had some really good things in it, but everything is just sort of soured by this pass. Even the Fade pass has some nice things in it, but the execution of it is just not great. Surely there are better ways to reward a monthly subscription besides hiding game features. That's enough for now. I actually like what the anniversary celebration itself is offering, so hopefully we can just focus on that moving forward. Thanks for watching, I wish you guys the best of luck summoning on all the banners coming up, and I'll see you guys in the next video.